What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Sports Talk with Broads, and what I have here for you today is an episode about the second round of this March Madness tournament, one of the craziest March Madness tournaments we have seen in a long time, a very long time. Before we begin, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, comment if you'd like to, because I enjoy speaking with you guys. Seriously, I haven't seen a March Madness opening round this wild in Forever. I mean, it, seriously, this is insane. Kicking it off, Villanova just walks all over Alabama, and that's great. I mean, I'm not a diehard Villanova fan, but be, being from the Philadelphia area, I, I like Villanova. I get it. They're a little bit outside, but I enjoy watching the Big East a lot. I'll be honest with you. The Big East is like one of my favorite conferences. Weirdly, I know it used to be even better back in the day, but I can't help the way I feel. So Villanova crushes Alabama, and that's great. Michigan, Houston. Are you serious? I love the way Rob Gray plays. He's a, a hell of a scorer. He gives you Steph Curry-like points in his first two NCAA games in the tournament. How can you hate on that? He scores the ball phenom phenomenally. He had 39 points in the first round. He followed that up with 25 plus in the second. He just he plays great basketball. Michigan. Finds a way to win it on a buzzer beater. Pool does his thing. I can't believe it. Jordan Pool pulls up with no time left on the clock. His feet are separated, drains it, and is running around the court. The thing to make it even worse is Houston had an opportunity to win this ball game by hitting free throws, and they miss. They miss the free throws, which gives Michigan the opportunity to win it. And that was the most exciting game of the Saturday first day of the second round matchup. I, I mean, my girlfriend was trying to go to bed and she goes, just turn it off. It's over. They nailed the buzzer beater. I gave her this look like, oh, oh it, I thought it was over. That was beautiful basketball. That's what the tournament is all about. You had Gonzaga and Ohio State play. Gonzaga advances. They win 90-84. to Ohio State, State kept pushing back. It was a game back and forth, hitting points, hitting buckets. That's beauty. That's beauty. I like Gonzaga because I kind of feel, even though they are always ranked high, they are kind of like an underdog because for some reason people think they can never do it. They made it to the national championship game. They've been making Final Fours. They're a good team. They got a great coach, and I really like the way that they played and advanced. Texas Tech outlasts Florida. Are you kidding me? Talk about a fantastic game. 69-66, Florida gets a two-pointer and steals the inbound after a trap. They had two three-point looks. And Florida bricked both. Texas Tech wins, but they fought till the end. They fought to the buzzer. Florida is another squad, even though they're ranked sixth in the tournament in their bracket. They are a great team, and a lot of people had them going far and upsetting a lot of teams, but little too much Texas Tech had. Texas Tech is a good veteran-like squad, and Florida had their opportunity late. They did. Duke. Just steamrolled Rhode Island. Rhode Island really didn't have anything going for them. Duke had the size, the zone. That's what it was, the size. They didn't have the same size as Duke does. Duke is obviously a little bit more talented. I thought URI would have been able to give them a little bit more of a game, but they just really had nothing going for them. Kentucky, the final score against Buffalo was a 20-point game. It was 95-75, to but that's not how the whole entire game played out. Buffalo hung in there. They balled a little bit, but just late, Kentucky kind of pulled, pulled away and did what they did and needed to do. And here it is. Loyola Chicago upsets third Tennessee and the 11th seed is going to the Sweet 16. They win 63-62. to Late in the game, Tennessee got an and one to tie the game and even take the lead by one. Loyola comes down and hits a mid-range Jimmy pull-up that hits the front of the rim, backboard, front of the rim, and in. 63-62 Loyola as Tennessee misses their, their three-pointer to win the game with zero seconds left on the clock. Their 98-year-old fan, Sister Jean, had them winning the first two games, which is fantastic, to make it to the Sweet 16, but she has them losing. Oh, could you imagine? She has them losing. And here we go for the final game on Saturday. Kansas and Seton Hall. Kansas wins 83-79. to They played good basketball. 
Seton Hall. They fought to the end. They would not let this Kansas team walk away with an easy victory. And they actually had one player, Delgado, have 24 points, 23 boards. First player with 15 and 15 against Kansas since Tim Duncan in 1994. So that is interesting. Seton Hall ball, though. It's another Big E squad that I obviously love watching play. Now, here we go. We move on to Sunday. Florida State, this was a late game. Florida State comes back from a 12-point deficit late in the second quarter and beats Xavier, a Big E squad. Are you kidding me, Xavier? I thought you were going to be able to do it. I love Makura. He's a baller. He, he knows the game of basketball. He's got great IQ. And Florida State, with a dagger three to take the lead late, just did it. They just kept winning. And last year, they got demolished in the second round by Xavier. So they had a little bit of mojo coming, knowing that... They got destroyed by Xavier last year. And Syracuse, the last four team in Syracuse who had to play a play-in game, beats Michigan State 55-53. to And you know why? Because of their length, their size, and the zone. Michigan State obviously had a very poor, poor game offensively, but you got to credit Syracuse to that. Are you kidding me? MSU couldn't hit anything. They, they missed their last 14 shot attempts, their worst field goal percentage in 20 years. And it's the Syracuse D, the Syracuse 2-3. They don't go to their bench at all. That's why this is amazing to me what they're doing you gotta applaud Syracuse and continue to see you know how they play and now you have the Cincinnati Nevada game Nevada wins 75 to 73 against Cincinnati who was up 22 Nevada was down 22 in this ball game are you kidding me Cincinnati's player Cumberland fouls out with about five minutes left the coach was pissed because he let him play with four fouls in foul trouble and Nevada just kept pushing and fighting and pushing and fighting their coach was so pumped after the game you should have saw the emotion on his face the way they played though you have to applaud them they did not give up Cincinnati was all over them I was texting my March Madness group chat and even said look at the way Cincinnati came out to start the game tonight that was beautiful and Nevada doesn't give up and keeps fighting to the end. Fantastic. Next game, Texas A&M just destroys North Carolina. One of Roy Williams' worst loss in NCAA history. A 7th-ranked Texas A&M team pops 86 points on North Carolina. Joel Berry, Theo Pinson, thank you for everything you have done for this sport. They walk out of here losing in the first round. So, I'm sorry, second round, first weekend of the tournament as seniors after they have you know, lost their sophomore year on a buzzer beater to Villanova and won last year. They go out early, their senior year. West Virginia, Marshall wasn't even a game. West Virginia throws up 94 points on Marshall, and it was just no competition. Same with the next one, Clemson and Auburn. Clemson just went to work, 84-53. to Sorry, Charles Barkley, maybe next time. Purdue, you have Isaac Haas out, injured with an elbow injury, which is a shame because it happened in garbage time of the first round. They went 76-73. to Purdue hit a dagger three with under 20 seconds left, and that pretty much won them the ball game. And then, here it was, the, the miracle team, UMBC. Plays Kansas State. Talk about a defensive game. 50-43 to Kansas State wins. I was devastated. I felt like it was my actual team. Are you kidding me? They played their hearts out. Their grit. Their defense. They were all over the place. They were, they were hustling. Stealing balls. Taking charges. They just couldn't score. And I think that, you know, they don't have what they need offensively to be able to hang with like a big 12 Kansas State team. And But realistically, they could have won that ball game. No doubt. I truly believe they could have won that ball game it just came down to not being able to score there a lot of their three-point uh threats did not hit their shots they were they were struggling offensively but their work ethic and and, and with all that they their defense only let up 50 points it was just a shame they really played their hearts out and i applaud them Absolutely. So, here we go. The Sweet 16, locked and loaded. Here we have Thursday, Loyola, Chicago, Nevada. Texas A&M versus Michigan. Kansas State versus Kentucky. And Florida State versus Gonzaga. 
the second day. Clemson plays Kansas. West Virginia, Nova. Nova has to play a tough West Virginia squad. Are you kidding me? After all these upsets, they still got to play a West Virginia team. That's going to be tough. Syracuse, Duke, two teams playing zones right now. Seriously, that's going to be interesting. And Texas Tech, Purdue. There is your Sweet 16. They are locked and loaded. Thank you so much for listening. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe, comment if you'd like to. I enjoy speaking with you guys. I love March Madness. It's the best. <laughs> Absolute best.